In today's video, we're going to rescape my currently completely overgrown 70 liter scapers tank and turn it into a beautiful aquascape again. It's been up and running for a year, so it's definitely time for something new. I'm excited. Hope you guys are excited as well. Let's get started. So usually when I'm doing a build video, we're always starting with an empty tank then I'm adding in a fresh substrate layer, then we make a nice hardscape, we're planting it, filling it up, and then we're letting it cycle for two or three weeks before we add in the fish. This time, however, we already have fish, so we need to take a bit of a different approach. Yeah, so I'm thinking to remove the plants, remove the hardscape, and remove the fish. I'll keep the substrate in, but I'll probably boost it with some root caps just to give it some extra nutrients again. And then we can see which plants we can still reuse, come up with a nice new layout. And if we do everything in one or two days, keep the filter running as well and we should be able to put the fish straight back in and that's it it's gonna be quite a big task but um i think it's doable so let's get straight to work okay so let's start by shutting off the filter I'll shut off the co2 as well and then i've already prepared a lot of towels some buckets because this is going to get messy Okay, so I've drained most of the water and I'm storing it in these buckets here. So in the middle bucket, we'll probably catch all the fish and put them in there. Then the filter in and out and we'll either go in the small one or in the big one, just so we can keep the filter running, keep the beneficial bacteria alive. I don't think it's nearly necessary to save the water if you're doing a rescape, but we need, we need a place to put the fish, we need a place to put the filter. So we might, might as well uh, reuse some of the water later as well. So we have quite a lot of fish in here. We have a big group of the Ember Tetras. There's one uh, orange Pascai rainbow. We have some green neon tetras. You alright then, buddy? He's stuck in the carpet, but he's fine. Uh, we have green Kubotai rasboras, and we have guppies. So it's a bit of a community-style tank, I guess. I want to remove the guppies from this tank and place them somewhere else, but all the other fish will go back. And I want to add a feature fish. So usually I would go for like a dwarf cichlid, something like that, but I have something different in mind, and I'll show you guys later. Let's first remove this pot of rotala. We can definitely use that later. Then I think I'm going to be quite brutal with this and just... There's quite a lot of wood in here, so I'm just going to start pulling that out. We have loads of jar fern in here as well. We can definitely reuse that. <laughs> Look at that. That's insane. Here's the biggest one. Would you look at that, guys? That's really beautiful. Some of you might remember the lily that I put in the uh, in this tank. Came from my outdoor pond. Still in here. We can definitely use it again. Would be nice. Okay, I've removed everything, and the water has gone quite murky. So I'm sure there's some people watching right now that are thinking like, "Oh, why would you do it like that? It's probably bad for the fish." But actually this is fine, this is my preferred way of doing it because if I would leave the plants and the hardscape in it's really difficult to catch the fish so I would have to chase them with a the net for a very long time that's causing them more stress than doing it this way because right now they're fine and I can catch them all within 5 minutes it's the, it's the least stressful method in my opinion See, just three minutes have passed and I've already caught almost all of the fish. I'm now just going to lower the water level a bit more so I can see, uh, see the last fish and catch them as well. Okay, all the fish are caught. There might still be some small shrimp inside, but that's fine. I just took a little moment to reorganize myself. So the filter is now up and running in this little uh, container here. I've got the fish over here in this bucket. And here I have two trash bags with all the plants. The only thing I've thrown away is the carpet because I couldn't use it anymore. It was infested with moss. So here we have the stem plants. Here we have the java ferns or the other way around. So the next step is to clean the tank. There's quite a bit of algae on the glass. But I also want to clean the substrate. There's a lot of plant roots in there. And there's a lot of dirt in there. So I'm going to fill the tank back up with water clean all the sides and then wave my hand around the substrate, kind of get all that dirt accumulated in the water column, siphon out the dirty water and then we're all, uh, we're all clean and fresh again. Ok, 
Okay, tank is all cleaned up. So I think we can now start working on the hardscape again. And I'm probably gonna keep it sort of the same because we have those beautiful pieces with Microsorum and we should definitely use them again, right? I think they just need to be cleaned up a little bit and then they're ready to go. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, there's some crypts here still. I'm kind of just gonna rip off some of the moss because the moss is not really in the best. Well, it's in a good shape, but it's just very messy, so. I think we just remove most of the moss. There's some beautiful Anubias here in the bottom as well, but you just didn't see them anymore. So maybe we can kind of bring them back as well. Some of these Java front layers are a little bit covered in algae, so I'm just gonna cut them off probably. Okay, so as the first piece cleaned up, you guys probably don't see the difference on camera, but I just removed a lot of moss, some ugly leaves as well. And I think this piece used to be kind of on the left side. So let's see if maybe we can do it on the right side. Just, just try to come up with a different composition a little bit. But let me first clean up the other two pieces. I don't know if you guys can see on camera, this one is completely flat because it was pushed up against the glass. There's a lot of bobitis here on this side as well, but it just doesn't really look very nice. So yeah, I'm probably just gonna remove that. The moss is completely taking over here as well. Okay, that's all done. We have the two main pieces in the tank and I have one smaller piece on the floor. Um, now we just need to come up with a nice composition that sort of looks a little bit different than what it used to be. I think as the way it is right now, that's how it was. So we need to kind of swap things around. The one thing that's kind of bothering me with the right piece is that we have two different types of Microsorum. I think on top we have the Microsorum Mini and then below that we have the Trident. But somehow it's just not really working together. So we need to figure out something with that as well. Let me just uh, play around a little bit. I quite like that. I've actually flipped it around, so like 180 degrees. So the, the microsome that you see right now is actually growing on the other side. So it's actually quite clean and free of algae, so that's nice. Now this piece, I've just removed the trident. I just really didn't like it. Uh, we can always reattach it somewhere else, but I don't think I'll use it. How about we just use these two pieces? So we have like one big island, one small island. I think that could work, right? I think this can work. We don't necessarily need to use the three pieces. So now we have one big piece, one smaller piece, and that creates a lot more openness. With the previous layout, we just had a wall with Microsorum and that I just kind of uh, didn't enjoy it anymore because it was just too dense, you know? We just had a wall with Microsorum, small carpet in front of it, stems in the back, and there was not really much space for the fish to swim anymore. So let's keep it a bit more open this time. I've also just washed the rocks. That's a bit hard to see. These are ADA Yamaya stones. So they came from the previous layout as well. I just washed them. And let's see if we can use them again. Okay, it's a little bit later, but I've made some good progress. Basically decided I don't want to carpet in the foreground, so I made a barrier with the rocks and some of the ADA aqua gravel as well. I think it looks quite nice. I've also raised the two pieces of wood just to make them uh, a little bit higher and just so we're able to place some crypts in the foreground here. So I've placed them on some black lava rocks so they're a little bit higher, a little bit more stable as well. So that's good. And I've also prepared all the plants, or well, these, these are the plants that came out of this tank and they're gonna go back. So we have the crypts, we have the, uh, the green long grass plant, that's the Cypress Hell Fairy. We have some Rotalas, we have some Ludwigias, and I have some more uh, plants going in as well. So let's start with some of these crypts. They should be okay underneath these microsorums. It's not much light here, but should be good. This is the Crypt Wendy Ti Compact, by the way. So it's a smaller variety. Then I have a different type of crypt. I actually forgot the name of this one, but I'll put it on the I'll put the name on the screen. Really interesting leaf pattern on this crypt. It's a little bit lighter in color as well, so we have some contrast between the two types. Okay, almost impossible to get my camera in this angle, but in the background here, I'm gonna plant the Rotala orange juice. I have quite a lot of stems, so I'm gonna spread them out nicely. I really have to keep on spraying these Java branches because they dry out so quickly. Then we have the ginormous green cypress cell fairy. I want this to poke out just behind the, the microsome, the Java ferns. So I think this is a good spot for it. Then I'm also gonna plant some of the, uh, the red Ludwigia. So we have two types of red stem plants in the background. Let's see how that's gonna work. A little bit on this side as well. 
And then I'm also going to plant the water lily in the background. So this is the Nymphaea helvola, I think it's called. I've actually removed all the leaves because they were in a bit of a bad shape. I've also cut off all the roots. So I'm just going to bury this. I don't even know what it is. I'm just going to bury this thing into the substrate. Not really bury it, but just like, just to make sure it stays there, you know, it's not going to float up. Yeah, I think that should do it. Okay, so that was pretty much all the plants that we could reuse again. We still have some empty spots. Luckily, I have some plants left over from previous project as well. Yeah, so I had one pot of S. repens left over. I had three bunches of the Mayaka fluviatilis, so like a small green stem plant. And I had an in vitro pot of the Helanthium tenellum red as well. So we can definitely use this. Okay, so the S. repens first. I left some spaces in amongst the crypts. It looks quite nice actually. Some on this side as well. It's quite shaded here, so I'm not sure if it's gonna work. Fingers crossed it will. Yeah, I'm gonna fill up this midsection with the uh, Helanthium. So that will give us a bit of a wild look as well. And I have one more plant going in this midsection, but I'll show you in a minute. It's a bit of a rare plant actually. Then the Mayanka is going to go in the back right corner. It's already in these uh, sort of clay rings. I'm just going to leave it in that as well. Then the last plant I want to add is in here. It's this small lily that you see here in the front. I think it's called the Nymphaea Gardneriana, something like that. It's a really small type of lily. I never used it before, so I want to give it a try. I don't really have a spot for it, but I'm just going to plant it directly in the center here. Well, not of, sort of in the center. And hopefully it will take off. Nice, so I think that's the planting done. I'm really happy with that. I think that's gonna look really good. We're gonna have some nice colors of red and green in the background again. A nice open path in the middle. Lots more open space. Yeah, let's fill it back up. And then we can uh, sort out the fish. Here we go, thanks filling back up. So it actually gives me time to do a little plug. So this tissue right here, this is the Aquarium Imbalance and this one is from Moss Cotton. They have loads of really cool designs, all aquascaping related. So if you're looking for some new t-shirts or some new merch, you can go to moscotton.com, use my code MJAqua10, gives you a nice discount, and it's a nice way to support the channel as well. So now that the tank is rescaped and looking good again, I want to get a new feature fish. Now usually I would go for like a dwarf cichlid, something like Apisogramma, but I've been thinking about getting something different for a while now. So I'm back in my local fish shop and they have some really beautiful dwarf gouramis. Yeah, so I think they just got a new delivery in, so it might be a little bit extra noise as well because all the, the lids are open. But here on top, they have the, uh, the yellow ones. I'm not sure what's the common name for them. It's like yellow dwarf gourami or golden dwarf gourami. These are quite nice. Here on this side, they have a few other types. So these guys, I'm not sure if they're still labeled as dwarf grammys. I think they'll go slightly bigger. And the red ones as well. These are also quite nice. And these guys, they're a little bit similar, but slightly different. But the ones that I'm after are here on top. These guys, the honing grammy in the Netherlands, or honey grammys. I've been looking at these guys for a while now and I think they're the perfect fit for that uh, 70 liter scapers tank so I think I'm gonna take one pair of them home with me. And we're back home so we got one pair of the honey grammys. The orange one is the male, the most colorful one. And I'm super, super excited to have these fish. I don't know why I didn't keep them earlier. I'm always looking for fish that have interesting behavior. And I think these guys definitely have that. So super excited about it. Also very happy with how the tank is doing. It's now been three days since I rescaped it. And I just can't wait for these stem plants to grow in. You guys are gonna see that at the end of this video. I'm gonna release this video in two or three weeks from now once everything has grown in a bit more. So definitely stay tuned until the end. The fish have been acclimated. I uh, took a little bit more time to do that because I am using CO2 in this aquarium and of course the aquarium's 
uh, the tanks in the shop don't have CO2. So there's going to be a, quite a big difference between water parameters. So it just took a little bit longer to acclimate these guys, but I think we're all good so we can release them. I always forget that this aquarium has a backlight. Let me turn it on. Yeah, here we go. Now that the aquarium is more open, it looks quite nice as well. I mean, I had it with the previous layout as well. I just then never turned it on because you, you barely saw it anyway. But yeah, I think the backlight definitely adds, a, adds something to this aquarium. Let me actually reduce the flow first. It's quite strong at the moment. I don't think these honeygrams are a big fan of strong flow. So I'm just going to add the uh, Acorio reliever back on. Well, not like that. Here we go. That's better. Okay, here we go. Let me flip the bag so you guys can see it. They're so beautiful. The male is so bright orange. And it's only going to get better. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Look at that. They're immediately uh, chilling underneath the uh, Cypress Hill Ferry. Yeah, let me actually add some floating plants in here as well. Here we go. Just a little bit of Sylvania and Redwood floaters. Thank you. 